so wonderful to see so many people here on this exciting day for us. Welcome to the groundbreaking ceremony for the new Center for Clinical Excellence in the Emma Eccles Jones College of Education and Human Services. I'm Beth Foley, Dean of the College, and I'm honored to be celebrating the beginning of construction on this project with all of you today. Hey Lance, they're supposed to stop because we haven't broken ground yet. <laughs> That's all an illusion. <laughs> Before we begin our program, please join me in recognizing members of the Utah State University Student String Quartet. You can stand when I call your name. Rebecca Ostermiller, Abby Wheeler, Alexandra Cook, and Josiah Cordez. Today is an exciting day for the college and I'm delighted to share what the new Center for Excellence holds for the future. Designed as a state-of-the-art 100,000 square foot facility, the center will be home to several nationally recognized clinical research and graduate training programs and will also provide direct services to thousands of individuals and families across Utah and the region. Clinical programs and services that will be housed in the new building include audiology, speech-language pathology, psychology counseling, marriage and family therapy, special education, health education and promotion, medical services, nursing, financial counseling, and many others, but I know you don't want to stay here for two hours, so. Uh, unique features in the facility will include an underground parking garage. We have a lottery for, never mind. <laughs> an ADC tiered classroom, a cafe, a teaching kitchen, a hydrotherapy pool, a smart apartment, a sibling playroom, a yoga studio, and a gallery featuring exhibits by artists with disabilities. Utah citizens will be able to conveniently access any or all of these services in a single location, services that are currently dispersed across 10 different buildings on this campus. Co-locating these critical services will enable us to address complex human problems from a cross-disciplinary perspective and more effectively train the health and human service professionals of the future to meet the needs of vulnerable populations. Think about this. When the center is completed, a person with autism and his or her family will be able to receive vital, comprehensive services across the lifespan starting in early childhood and continuing in adulthood, all in the same place. A person recovering from a stroke who has no health insurance will still have access to cutting edge speech and language therapy and physical rehabilitation services, as well as opportunities for participating in support groups with other stroke survivors, all in one place. The Center for Clinical Excellence will enable this college to provide coordinated one-stop shopping for individuals with complex physical, behavioral, emotional, and financial needs. Imagine no more navigating multiple providers and locations and no more siloed or fragmented service delivery. There won't be another place like it anywhere and we've looked. So. We believe the Center for Clinical Excellence will be unique in the nation and will enable us to better prepare the next generation of researchers, educators, human service and healthcare professionals while providing high quality, affordable, interdisciplinary care. This project has been a labor of love for many, many people with a shared vision and we're grateful to have so many extraordinary partners in this important effort. With us today are several longtime advocates of this project, including Executive Vice President and Provost Noelle Cockett and her husband John. <laughs> Members of the Central Administration, Neil Abercrombie, our Director of Government Relations. Neil, I know you're out there. Mark McClellan, Vice President for Research and Dean of the Graduate School. And 
my fellow deans, Jagath Kulurachi. <coughs> Jagath, are you here? He's the Dean of Engineering. <laughs> Craig Jessup, Dean of the Kane College of the Arts. I didn't see Joe Ward. Is Joe here? Joe Ward is the Dean of Chess. Mara Hagen from the College of Science. And Ken White from the College of Agriculture. Joining us too are a number of remarkable young men and women that you see wearing navy polo shirts and name tags. Those are our college ambassadors and they represent the bright future of education and human services in Utah. Today's ceremony is about acknowledging the efforts of many people committed to improving education, research, and services in health and human service disciplines. And I'd especially like to recognize a few individuals for their dedication to our shared goal. First, to members of the Sorensen Legacy Foundation Board, Carol Smith, Thomas Johnson, and Gail and Tom Williamson. Thank you for the major gift that enabled us to construct this new center and for your guidance in ensuring that the facility will be optimal for stimulating far-reaching interdisciplinary research and clinical practice. We are deeply grateful for this and previous gifts from the Sorensen Legacy Foundation, <coughs> including two arts education endowments and support for Aggies Elevated, our residential college program for young adults with intellectual disabilities. We'll talk more about the Sorensen Legacy Foundation in a few minutes. But thank you. To the Emma Eccles Jones Foundation Board members, Clark Giles, thank you for your generous gift in support of units in the new center that will focus on health education and promotion and nursing education. This gift is one of many generous gifts from the Emma Eccles Jones Foundation to this college over the years now totaling an incredible $48 million. A look around at the buildings on this quad should give everyone here today a sense of the proud, profound impact of these prior gifts. Your foundation gave us the Edith Bowen Laboratory School, the Emma Eccles Jones College of Education building, and the Emma Eccles Jones Center for Early Childhood Research and Education, all of which are central to the work of this college. Thank you. <laughs> to the George S. and Dolores Doré Eccles Foundation board members who could not attend today but send their best wishes, we thank them for their generous support of an applied neuroscience unit in the new center that will enable us to advance research and clinical practice that addresses age-related conditions such as hearing and balance problems or arthritis, as well as acquired disorders such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, traumatic brain injury, and stroke. Thank you. <laughs> to Senator Lyle Hilliard, who couldn't be here today, and Representatives Ed Red. And Kurt Webb, esteemed members of the Utah State Legislature, for their steadfast support of Utah State University and for their help in securing a $10 million legislative appropriation for this project. You have helped ensure that our graduates will enter the workforce as well-trained professionals and that the citizens of Utah will have access to high-quality, affordable clinical services across the lifespan. Thank you. <laughs> to 
to the college department heads and directors who guide our professional training programs and community outreach and who help secure an additional $10 million in, in internal resources that were critical to this project. Department head Scott Allgood. Craft and Andy Walker and Center for Persons with Disabilities Director Judith Holt. Thank you all for your hard work during the past year helping to forge a plan for a warm and welcoming building that will also be efficient and cost effective all without a single disagreement or argument. <laughs> That's the truth. To Robert, Eric, and Joe Jacoby of Jacoby Architects. Thank you for meeting the projected needs of future building occupants so well and for a bold, exciting design that will complete our Education and Human Services Quad. Thank you. And to Jacob Romney and everyone from r and Construction, are you here? They're probably over there. <laughs> Thank you for working so hard to stay on schedule and so far under budget. That's why we already have a gaping 20-foot deep hole in the ground before our official groundbreaking. They just couldn't wait to get started. We thank them, too, for keeping the children at Edith Bowen Laboratory School and the Center for Early Care and Education safe as they watch this new building come to life. Thank you. <laughs> to our partners from Utah State University Facilities, Kelly Christofferson, and Ben Barrett, I'm not sure if they're here. <laughs> to Daryl Hunting from the Utah Division of Facilities and Construction Management. <laughs> Thanks for educating us about nuts and bolts reality. We sometimes call them the dream crushers, but not usually to their faces. <laughs> For their help planning today's events, thank you to Lance Beckert, our College Development Officer, who was assisted by Amy Wilberg. Amy, where are you? Okay, Shannon Johnson, and other members of the Dean's Office staff. And finally, many thanks to Associate Dean Shelley Lindauer. Shelley, where are you? She didn't want me to say this, but she helps with all the things that require coordination, planning, and attention to detail, and I couldn't live without her. Thank you. President Stan Albrecht is unable to join us today, but sends his regrets and his deep appreciation for all who have made this project possible. We are fortunate to have with us today Provost Noel Cockett, who will offer some brief remarks. Good morning. On behalf of USU and President Stan Albrecht, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this groundbreaking ceremony for the Center for Clinical Excellence Building, which is a historical event for the Emma Eccles Jones College of Education and Human Services. The USU College of Education and Human Services ranks in the top 2% of all colleges of education in the nation, 30th among graduate schools of education, and the only college of education in Utah to rank in the top 50.
The college is also ranked fifth in the nation for research expenditures, and last year was a record for the college. <coughs> $50.6 million in grants and contracts. This means that the Emma Eccles Jones College of Education and Human Services was the best external funding college at USU last year, a distinction that has been true for many, many years. This is... <laughs> a clapping crowd. <laughs> This is also the largest college on campus, with eight departments, three research centers, and almost 6,000 students. We are proud of the college's significant contributions to Utah State University and the citizens of our state. The new Center for Clinical Excellence that we celebrate today will add to the legacy of this college. The state-of-the-art facility will continue the college tradition of excellence in interdisciplinary research, professional education, and comprehensive clinical service delivery across the lifespan. This will be another jewel in the college crown that surrounds the education and clinical services quad that we're joined together today at. Uh, Beth uh, Dean Foley already acknowledged many of the people who have contributed to this building. I'd like to re-acknowledge some of those individuals. I'd like to thank the state legislature for its wisdom in funding a portion of this building. DFCM and USU facilities for their oversight of the project. The college faculty and staff in their contributions of time and thought in developing the design and strategy of the building. Bob Jacoby and his sons, Eric and Joe, who always combined incredible function and inspiring beauty in their designs. RNO Construction, who we heard from Beth Foley, will construct the building on time and under budget. <laughs> Of course, a huge thank you goes to the donors who made this clinical excellent building possible. USU and those this building serves are truly touched by the donors' generosity. I'd also like to do a special recognition for Dean Beth Foley. Beth envisioned a center that would serve all of these people since 1975 when she started working with people that had communication disorders. This building became a reality when she started as Dean over six years ago. Dean Foley envisioned a built place that would highlight the college strengths and create better opportunities for serving those with clinical needs. I get actual goosebumps when I think of the hundreds of people who will pass through the Center for Clinical Excellence. Each one of these people will feel the care vision, love, and passion that went into creating this building. Through this center, they will have their lives impacted for the better. Again, thank, to, thank you to all of those who moved this dream into reality and made the Center for uh, Excellence in Clinical Services possible. Thank you, Provost Cockett. I have to pull this down now, I'm short. <laughs> For your kind words and your enduring support of the college and of this project, and everything you said was so true. <laughs> I'm delighted that as part of this groundbreaking celebration, we are not only unveiling the unique design of the building, but also officially announcing for the first time its new name. I'll need a little help, I think, from the ambassadors who will unveil the new name. So, announcing for the first time, the Sorensen Legacy Foundation Center for Clinical Excellence. Thank you so much.
today on behalf of the Sorensen Legacy Foundation is Gail Williamson, a member of the Foundation Board and one of the daughters of its founders, James Lavoy and Beverly Taylor Sorensen, both of whom were visionary community religious and philanthropic leaders in Utah and the nation. Gail, would you come up? Established in 2007, the Sorensen Legacy Foundation supports a wide range of endeavors from community development and education to health care, scientific and artistic pursuits. And we are immensely grateful that the foundation recognized the value and the potential of this project. Gail Williamson is herself a visionary and the founder of Elizabeth Academy, a Montessori school in Salt Lake City dedicated to the concept of inclusive education for all children, including those with disabilities. She has inspired people across Utah to embrace a more inclusive model of student-centered education that values and nurtures diverse learners. I thank her for her guidance in designing a truly inclusive center where innovative clinical research and training will flourish and where individuals and families across the state and beyond will have expanded access to high quality clinical services throughout their lives. Please join me in welcoming Gail Williamson. This isn't about me. <laughs> and Thank you, Provost, for, for your remarks about Beth, because truly, um, this is about people, and Beth is a people person, and Beth, you know, I just, you know, I have a great friendship with Beth, and, and, and what she did, does, and what she gives, and her passion for people, um, and the connection of people is, is really what drew me um, beyond all the great things that, um, this clinical um, center will provide to, to want to, to pursue this. So I'm honored here today to be representing the Sorensen Legacy Foundation and I'd like to acknowledge my husband Tom and my sisters Carol Smith and my and Shauna Johnson for also their support on um, at the Legacy Board in, in seeing that this is a truly worthy endeavor. Um, I've been blessed to know Beth um, personally, or Dean Foley, I should say, um, and I share her passion um, for children, education, and innovative health services. I believed in this project from the beginning, and these fellow board members were also quick to see the vision and see how it meshed with the same principles that my father believed in. My father, James Lavoie Sorensen, a co-founder of Sorensen Legacy Foundation with my mother, had a similar pa passion to aid in the relief of human suffering through his medical innovations. He was fascinated by the field of science in, um, and in his community he contributed greatly to that end. And through the foundation, he also supported many other entities that promoted better health and the world of peace. He would be so pleased to see this groundbreaking. He would be so proud to be a part of it. I am grateful for the opportunity to be the link that would allow him to do so. I'm also grateful for another link, one that binds me to the next generation. This broken ground and the building that springs forth will provide precious fruit for my children and yours. I am deeply impressed with this project on a very personal level. As a mother of a child with a disability, I am fully aware, often painfully aware, of the desperate need for the kind of innovation and integrated services <coughs> that this center will provide. All human beings are wired to a, with a desire for connection and to make a contribution to society. This is often difficult for those who, perceive, who are perceived to be different. If you look at every service provided by this clinic, the aims are to help individuals overcome those challenges of difference. False perceptions are shed and new possibilities emerge. As perspectives change, the world changes. Utah State has broadened its vision of what is possible. 
50 years ago, we lived in a society where most people with disabilities were hidden behind institutional doors. When they came out of these doors, we didn't really know them, know how to serve them or educate them. We've come a long way. And as we come to know and love these people with disabilities, our perspectives have changed. Utah State has been at the forefront of making these changes. With every endeavor to support individuals with disabilities, the benefits are manifest in the broader community as well. I have witnessed this in my own inclusive schools, and I have no doubt it will be witnessed here. These aha moments when we realize what uh, what we can receive from an individual with disabilities, how they can benefit from the, how we can benefit from the insights gained through supporting them are incredible. The fact that these services are all placed on a campus where our healthcare professionals of tomorrow are receiving their training creates an impact that will resonate manifold. This is not isolated education. These disciplines do not operate in silos. They are synergistic. synergistic. They are cellular. They grow, they complement, they collaborate, they rejuvenate, and then they replicate. The beauty is that families can come to this center and have many needs addressed in all, all in one place. This is magnificent. What a gift to the community. What a gift to the world. This is a joyful day. On behalf of Sorensen Legacy Foundation, I am so honored and pleased to be a part of it. Thank you for sharing the day and supporting this wonderful endeavor, Utah State Center for Clinical Excellence. Thank you so much, Gail. Gail told me this morning that this would be out of her comfort zone, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Thank you so much. We will now enjoy a musical number performed by Janae Roberts, a voice major in the Department of Music in Utah State University's Kane College of the Arts, and she's originally from the Dominican Republic. She'll be accompanied on the piano by Luke Shepard, a Kane College of the Arts choral music education graduate. Show that you 
No life without its hunger No restless heart beats so imperfectly so much that was amazing I'm going to hire you for the building dedication when it's finished and I'm going to triple your ch the, whatever you were charging it's not enough thank you so much that was fantastic when this building is completed in November of 2017 the Sorensen Center for Clinical Excellence I've already shortened it sorry <laughs> made possible by so many generous donors and friends truly will secure the future for important work that will be done in health and human service research, education, and care. Please join me in expressing appreciation once more to all those who have contributed to this effort. I also a little belatedly would like to welcome Dean Doug Anderson from the Huntsman School of Business. I didn't see you there before. Welcome. Time for the groundbreaking, which I know is a little funny with that picture behind you, but this is the official one. I now invite Carol Smith, Shauna Johnson, Tom and Gail Williamson, Clark Giles, Bob Hatch, Provost Cockett, Ed Red, Gage Frohr, and Kurt Webb, I think he's not here, is he? Okay, then he doesn't have to go up. <laughs> Please come forward for the ceremonial groundbreaking. When they're finished, we'll also have a groundbreaking by a group of children from our ASSERT Early Intervention Program for Children with Autism. And then have opportunities for others to come up and get your picture taken with the golden shovel. <laughs> After the groundbreaking, I invite all of you to view the schematic designs and the construction model that the architects have provided for us today and invite you to enjoy some famous Aggie ice cream, which we've done this so well is not melting in the back. And thank you all so much for being here today. Let's break ground. Ooh.